Hello and welcome everybody to the Futurum Tech Podcast. I'm Daniel Newman, your host, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Futurum Research. And excited about this Futurum Tech Podcast interview series where I will have Nicole de Gaulle from Qualcomm, he leads the automotive business over there, to come on and talk about a number of big announcements that the company had today. Of course, a uh, really big topic, important topic. Everybody right now, there's so much excitement around what's going on in EVs, autonomous driving, and Nicole, Nicole here is gonna have so many great insights. So thrilled to bring him onto the show here. Um, of course, before we do get started, just wanna remind everybody the show is for information and entertainment purposes only. So while we are talking to Qualcomm and leadership at Qualcomm, do not uh, take anything we're gonna talk about here as an investment advice. We're gonna talk about tech. We're gonna talk about where things are going. This is for your information and entertainment. And without further ado, Nicole, welcome to the Futurum Tech Podcast. Thank you very much, Dan. Great to be with you. Hey, it is great to have you here. Uh, we've had uh, many of your colleagues on this show here, um, and we always enjoy talking to the leadership team over at Qualcomm. So um, big day for you today, uh, yeah. big Qualcomm automotive event. I followed it throughout the day um, and a lot of really exciting announcements. I don't want to steal your thunder. Um, before I hop in, though, because I got some questions for you. But uh, just want a quick introduction so that everybody knows you and a little bit about who you are and what you do yeah. at Qualcomm. Do you mind? I run the uh, I run the automotive business. I've been there about uh, twenty five years, and uh, you know, I think automotive is the place to be nowadays. So I think uh, I think we've been doing a lot of great work with our partners worldwide. We made a number of announcements today, and uh, happy to be with you and uh, get into the details. Great. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here. So, you know, we're, we're seeing so much um, talk right now. If you turn on, you know, CNBC or any of the business news, uh, EVs are huge. People are excited. Everything from connected and the, the data that the vehicles are putting off to, you know, charging to uh, modernization, connectivity. Of course, we've seen... Uh, our friends at Tesla just shoot to the moon over the last few months. And this is really, you know, these are all broader indicators of, 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 of a trend. And of course, we've got new um, administration coming in, going to be a lot more focused on sustainability and, um, you know, uh, carbon neutrality and, and EVs and autonomous is going to be huge there. So you've got to be excited. What are some of the trends, Nicole, that you're really paying attention to right now in this space in automotive? You know, the way that we've broken this down for ourselves is more connected, more autonomous, more electrified. And if you take a big step back and kind of uh, map out everything that has happened over the last 15 to 20 years in tech, you know, you, you've seen uh, more re most recently cloud becoming pervasive. Prior to that, smartphones becoming pervasive. AI is now very democratic. And connectivity, of course, is what has allowed us to be able to get to where we have come. I think what is upon us really is that the auto industry, which has traditionally been a slower moving industry, has uh, caught up to a lot of this change and is reinventing itself completely. And I don't think it is just the automotive industry. It's actually the transportation business as a whole. So because the auto industry and transportation as a whole are so foundational to everything that we do, to the way we live, to the way we travel, to the way we, you know, today, delivery services, ride hailing, you know, clearly the amount of change going on represents a huge opportunity for so many different industries. Uh, that I think is what is upon us. We are playing uh, our part in it and we are finding that the opportunity is much bigger than just, you know, participation in the silicon space. There's, there is a lot to go do. And, uh, you know, that's why uh, this is a very active space for us. That's why we made a lot of announcements today. Yeah, there are a lot of announcements. We're going to get to that in a minute. I will say, uh, Nicole, I, I still remember a few years back at Mobile World Congress listening to Cristiano talking about the opportunity, the pipeline uh, in automotive. I recently wrote a piece on Market Watch where I was trying to explain to the world um, that Qualcomm is so much more of a company than what it tends to get recognized for. It's in so many different things. Um, and people tend to think of it as the company that makes chips for handsets, if they know the brand at all. And it's one of the most important players in a global innovation ecosystem. And the diversification, uh, especially in your area, though, in automotive, has been 
material. And it's something that people really are paying attention to. Silicon is eating the world and the contribution of Silicon makers to the changing shape of, of automotive is going to be massive. And, and if you miss that, you're sort of missing one of the biggest opportunities in this space. So, um, you know, like I said, you had a big day. Um, I, I went through your press kit. I read your announcements. I watched some of your videos. There was a ton to cover here. So I'll start with a kind of the, the, the softball question. I, I, generally speaking, of all the announcements you had today, what are some of the ones that kind of you thought were the biggest and most exciting that, you know, uh, everyone should know about? You know, I think there were a number of them because we are participating now in so many different areas. Uh, I think the biggest one, maybe to get started, you know, we've been working with General Motors for a long time. Uh, GM has been a key partner of ours for over 20 years. We started off with OnStar with them back in 2002. And the partnership today was we are really working with them across the board. ADAS, autonomous, digital cockpit, telematics, cellular V2X in China. So, you know, the kitchen sink and uh, each of these engagements are actually quite independent. They have all started at any point in points in time. They're all with independent teams at GM. So the way to think about it is our approach to the industry, to the, to the auto industry, to our customers is one where we will sit side by side to solve problems from the vantage point of the automaker. And that is the big difference in the approach that we have taken where, you know, we have the foundational technology, but the application of that technology in the context of where the car is headed is the approach that uh, we have made a shift around. And GM is one of our key partners. They have uh, you know, really been working with us across uh, all of these areas. But I think the other, uh, you know, uh, major area that I'm quite proud of is uh, the partners that we have, uh, you know, Automotive, interestingly, and not surprisingly, uh, not surprising, uh, surprisingly, perhaps, is not like uh, the consumer business where it moves much faster. You have to be able to get a lot of experience uh, in the products that you build. Uh, quality requirements are very different from what you see in other markets, and you need to have a certain level of acceptance. Uh, from the automotive ecosystem. And we've built that over the last 10 years. Uh, we've invested in that space heavily. And you saw the number of partners that we have uh, across many different domains. Uh, we announced uh, an expansion of our Snapdragon Ride platform, uh, where we have now uh, you know, finalized our partnerships with Dionir. They formed a new entity called Arriver that will be building uh, uh, vision perception stacks, driver, uh, drive policy stacks, we will be optimizing uh, Valeo's parking automated solution, seeing machines that are monitoring onto Snapdragon Ride. So that is once again, recognizing the fact that automakers are interested in looking at the solution from an application perspective and then integrating that at the vehicle level. So that's the plane at which we are operating. And then I think the last one that was uh, interesting was uh, the one with Amazon uh, to bring uh, the Alexa custom assistant into our digital cockpit. Now, our approach on the cockpit is that, uh, you know, we do a lo lot of software scaffolding, as I like to call it, uh, on top of our hardware. So we don't just provide you silicon for you to be able to go build software on top. We provide a lot of different enablers on top. And a number of these over a period of time have essentially been with very key software partners, very key ecosystem partners. So in this case, we have integrated uh, or we have been planning to integrate uh, Alexa deeply into the DSP and bring all of the differentiation that the Snapdragon DSP has into the Alexa environment, make it simpler for automakers and tier ones to be able to go deploy the technology. Yeah, you you and I clearly are reading from the same playbook, uh, Nicole, because uh, when uh, I you know went through all the announcements and I wrote up kind of what are the things I wanna hit you a little bit deeper on, you picked those as sort of your, your uh, your big time announcement. So I'm going to, you know, you covered them kind of well, but I think I want to ask you to lean a little bit deeper into this. Um, GM, for instance, I mean, talk about legacy in the automotive business, but also talk about sort of the um, hyper opposite of a high tech company. It's sort of seen as a very old legacy industrial uh, manufacturer of automotive. Now we know you and I as, as tech people that there's tons of technology behind them. But really, they've come to you, as I read it, um, the company has come to Qualcomm to modernize. It's come to Qualcomm to be able to put the technology that you're building 
uh, inside of its newest and next generation vehicles to be able to compete. You know, I mentioned Tesla to 50 other EV companies coming to market. And then, of course, uh, legacy competitors, Ford and BMW. Talk about, and, and I know many of these are your partners. I know you guys work with many of these companies, but talk about that. Talk about how you partner with a company like a GM or across the board, the OEMs. Um, why is it this partnership so important? Why is Qualcomm so important to these companies? You know, one thing that is uh, fascinating because uh, this is the typical innovator's dilemma problem, right? For uh, really every ma every massive company and most companies in automotive that matter are massive. Uh, you know, it is really kudos to the executive teams of these automakers because the transformation upon them is to really change the culture of the company, is to be able to move from what you've been good at for decades and be able to develop new skill sets. And, you know, the way that our approach has worked with uh, companies like uh, GM and many others is really the trusted partner approach. Uh, it is a technology relationship. It is set in uh, being able to take feedback, uh, make changes to the way that we innovate, the way that we do, um, that we build our products, uh, connect them to the roadmap that our automaker partners are looking for, and uh, learn together. You know, we don't get everything perfect uh, right away, but uh, if you think about it over a longer period of time, uh, we do start to make those uh, shifts. And because we are now engaged across so many different areas, and these are all areas that are actually fairly transformational to what the next generation car is going to look like, there is a lot of learning, not just for us and our automaker partners, but the broader ecosystem that exists around us. So, you know, partners in the hardware space, in the analog space, in the memory space, in the software space, all of these partners are coming together to plan for what do we need to do right next time so that we keep making these continuous improvements. And that is only possible if there is a very open, transparent relationship. And it's really not two companies. It's actually a multiple uh, number of companies that come together to go make this happen. Yeah, I was, I was reading a lot of this throughout CES. And I know Qualcomm sort of chose to, you know, have this event as more of its moment than a virtual CES. And, and I think any company right now could argue there's many ways to split the uh, <laughs> to split the atom, but uh, essentially it gave you an opportunity to focus on a lot of announcements and not get lost in the, in the, you know, large virtual experience. But what I did notice was these partnerships and you mentioned this so many partnerships uh, between uh OEMs and chip makers, but not only that, um, you have cloud providers, edge, uh, you know, uh, companies making edge and data services. And also, by the way, I even saw semiconductor companies collaborating, which is kind of crazy, but it's not uncommon for Qualcomm to be one of maybe two or three um, semiconductor companies that are working within uh, the overall ecosystem of a different vehicle manufacturing. And I, and I am a, and a, you know, a high tide rises all boats kind of guy. So I think there's a lot of, of great things inside of that, um, which makes me think of partnerships. Again, you talked about OEM, but the other partnership that you, you mentioned being Amazon. I mean, Amazon is full court press and AI company is trying to basically involve itself in our lives uh, vehicle security was something it recently focused on. Uh, of course, Alexa in our homes. Um, it's got the giant cloud business, AWS. But it sounds like, once again, Qualcomm has turned to a, a, a high demand product that consumers tend to love and, and interact with every day. And you're putting it in the vehicle. So you kind of touched on that. But what does this really mean? So what does the experience look like for someone using a Snapdragon supported vehicle with Amazon look like? So, you know, we've been investing in our digital cockpit business for a number of years. We've had a lot of success in that business. We have over uh, 20 automakers now on our cockpit platform. And one of the big reasons for the success is that we are able to provide very comprehensive and very complete solutions that allow uh, both automakers and tier ones to accelerate the time to market. Uh, with Alexa's focus on custom voice assistance to be able to bring personalization, branding, skills integration, it's pretty clear that there is a large part of the market that is working more and more with Alexa's uh, innovation and expertise. And so the path we decided with the Alexa and uh, Amazon team was to deeply integrate the voice assistant into the Snapdragon cockpit platform. So we'll do that for Gen 3 and the upcoming Gen 4 platforms. 
we'll integrate them into our uh, audio DSPs, where we have a lot of built-in uh, audio differentiators, uh, you know, echo cancellation, noise suppression, uh, wake word readiness, et cetera. And that becomes part and parcel of the pre-integration that we provide to our customers. We will then allow, uh, through our car to cloud capabilities, uh, the uh, activation or deactivation of a feature like this from the cloud. So, you know, it is something that can be part of every vehicle, every platform that we sell, and it can be activated by Amazon or by the automaker uh, as uh, the need may arise. So the idea is to be able to uh, make it very pervasive, make it very optimized, you know, not run it on the CPU where you're ending up uh, taking cycles that uh, could be used for other things and really get to a much more superior experience. Yeah, absolutely. So we only have a couple of minutes um, really appreciate you taking the time. I'm sure you've been doing press all day. Um, as an analyst, we like to try to get a little deeper and cross over just uh, beyond reporting the news. So uh, thanks for getting kind of under the hood for me, uh, pun intended. Um, so last quick question. I noticed a lot of 5G talk. And, you know, 5G uh, is not just for handset, but a lot of people kind of, you know, we've talked about fixed wireless, which is something Qualcomm focused on. But vehicles, 5G and vehicles have a big relationship forming. Just talk a little bit about how Qualcomm sees that, uh, um, you know, and then I'll, I'll let you get back to your uh, your day full of events here in the cool. Yeah, sure. You know, so uh, we've been doing telematics in the car for almost 20 years. We have 150 million cars on the road with our modems. 5G has moved much faster than any previous uh, wireless generation, as you know. And we are now seeing every automaker not only plan for a connected car, but plan for a 5G connected car. So that is upon us just because of the pace at which uh, the transformation in the auto industry is going on. The other piece that I would mention is, you know, we introduced cellular V2X as a vehicle focused wireless technology for safety, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure communications. And uh, this was introduced as a brand new technology only in 2016, so not that long, long ago. We are happy to share, we are now commercialized in China so uh, GM announced that they have launched CB2X in BOX in China. We have a number of other Chinese OEMs that we've been working with, Hongxi, Neo, Great Wall, and many others who've started to deploy cellular V2X in China. So we see wireless becoming a very large part of how automakers think about differentiation and not just wireless connectivity, uh, connectivity between the car and the cloud, but also the immediate environment, cars to cars, cars, cars to roadside infrastructure. So, you know, there are so many different aspects of the portfolio that are at play at the same time. Really a very uh, thrilling time to be uh, part of the auto industry for us. Absolutely, and uh, what a great way to kind of wrap things up there. We're seeing it all come together. Um, you know, the vehicle, connected vehicle to everything, to X, right? And that's the big thing. I mean, yes to cloud, yes to vehicle, yes to cities uh, and smart infrastructure. But really, the future is about connecting to everything. Um, really, really big day for the company. Um, and, uh, you know, I just want to say, Nicole, thank you so much for spending a little time here with me on the Future in Tech podcast interview series. It's great to hear from you kind of all the thinking of, this big day of announcements. And unfortunately, there's probably another hour we could go to really get into all this stuff, but hopefully that was a good uh, good uh, intro to everybody and, and we'll get them reading and, and looking at all the things Qualcomm did today. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and wrap things up here for everybody. Go ahead and check out the show notes below. Uh, we have a full research note at Futurum where we're gonna dig in deep to all the things Nicole talked about. It was a great episode, ton of insights. I hope I can get them back here on the show soon because I'd like to spend another 20 or 30 minutes kind of digging into all these different announcements, but also just the future of the connected uh, vehicles, uh, you know, the automotive industry as a whole. But for this episode of the Futurum Tech Podcast interview series, I gotta wrap up and call it a day. Thanks again for uh, stopping by. Hit that subscribe button, join us. Uh, feel free to keep in touch with us on Twitter or in YouTube in the comments, we're active, we'll be there. Um, thanks Qualcomm for making this possible and for joining us today for this show though. It's time to go, say goodbye. We'll see you later.